only there was a way to be able to go ahead and automatically reboot your modem or router with some kind of special surge protector. That would be freaking awesome, wouldn't it? This is the Unify Network Power Strip. It is a Unify Smart Power Strip with six outlets, USB and Wi-Fi. Let's crack it open. Now, quick disclaimer, I did buy this with my own money. Now let's check this out. As you can see here, it reboots internet devices when Unify Network Controller detects an offline status. Works with any USAC plug, cable modem, DSL router, or optical network terminals. You'll use the Unify Network Controller to go ahead and adopt this and manage it. And then you can see here, we've got the six power control outlets up to 1,250 watts max. Then you've got four USB type C ports at one and a half amps max per port. So 20 watts max total. And then of course you got the multifunction button to like reset it and stuff. And it has a circuit breaker, which is kind of interesting. And then you can mount it on the wall uh, or magnet or ceiling. That's kind of interesting. And the maximum load on it is uh, 1.1 pounds. It says require screws. I wonder if screws come with it or not. Anyways, this is the USP tack strip, but let's open it up and unbox it. Well, we've got some uh, nice pictures here for the installation, kind of Ikea style in a way. The packing foam, and it's nice that they actually went ahead and numbered the plugs here. It does feel kind of like uh, cheap plastic on the top and nicer plastic on the bottom. I don't know why there's that variation. We've got a mounting plate built-in cord and hey look at that it does come with screws pretty sure that is everything in the box yep that is it let's take this mounting plate and it has some nice uh, like rubber strips on here so it won't uh, rub against the wall or scratch it I guess and then it looks like this would just go this way here. There we go. And it just clips right in. And now it's stuck. <laughs> there you go. It took a good bit of force to pull that back out, but it did come off. So do you want me to go ahead and void this warranty and crack it open? It hasn't been plugged in yet, so I can't shock myself, or at least in theory I shouldn't, provided that uh, there's no capacitors or anything inside of it storing any electricity, so it should be relatively safe for me to disassemble. All right, let's do it. So it looks like we just have these little rubber plugs here. And we should be able to take all these out. Now Ubiquity, if you're watching, it'd be great if you went ahead and provided like the Allen wrenches to be able to take this apart for people like me. Okay, I am using a TR9 to take this out. And let's see if we can get this open. Decent amount of force here off camera, but let's get this open. There we go. So check this out. <laughs> Just kidding. There's no electricity in it. But seriously, don't do this at home. I void warranties, so you don't have to. Make sure you're subscribed. So I'm gonna use the TR9 again. Looks like that fits fine. Pull these out. Kinda of hard to see that chip, or those chips. Uh, that's, so it looks like I should be able to tilt this and pull it back, pull it out. Now this looks to be more easily user serviceable than the UPS that Stefano had on his channel, SPX Labs. You might want to go check that out too. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys if you want to check that out. Well, there is a little bit of a kink in this wire. Should be fine. There we go. So this pulls straight up. And it looks like that it goes ahead and connects to this board right here. 
which is then the USB-C ports right there on the front. It looks like there's not really a whole lot to this. So it just looks like it has some switches and a couple of chips. It's very uh, basic. So let's see if we can actually see what these chips are, or if I have to bust out my microscope to be able to actually pull a good image off of it. So one other thing I just noticed here is that you actually have a thermal pad on the uh, back of the unit here, and that would be covering these chips right over here. Now, since you're still watching this video, I'm going to go ahead and say that you probably like it. So make sure you slap that like button here real quick. So let's go see if we can find those chips online, shall we? So this chip right here is the INN3166 CTAC H101. Now, this is a flyback switcher integrated circuit, it looks like. Uh, shows some applications here. And of course, I will have links down in the description below. And here is the data sheet for it. You can check that out. And what's interesting is that's really the only chip that I could even find online. Now I will go ahead and post full res photos on Instagram here so you can go ahead and find that. Uh, I'll drop a link down below over to all my links and you can just link over there to my Instagram and check that out. And if you're able to identify any of these chips, go ahead and please drop a comment down below as I'd love to see what you might be able to find that I haven't found quite yet. Now for the next challenge, putting it back together and hoping it works. One other thing that I was noticing is that I don't see on here anything that looks like a Bluetooth antenna or anything. So it could be on the bottom side of the board, but I really don't want to pull this whole thing out as I might not get it back together. So let's just reassemble it here. There we go. Reconnect this and then put all the screws back in. This is like playing Operation. Wow. Alright, so this just clips on back together. Put the screws back in. Now this is definitely one of the easier products to disassemble from Ubiquity. So thank you for that. And it also costs under $100 to potentially break in the process. Let's get all these feet back on here. Now let's go ahead and plug it in and see if I burn the house down. Make sure you're subscribed. Now if you don't know, electronics are actually powered by magic smoke. Let me explain. Once the magic smoke comes out of any type of electronic equipment, it doesn't run anymore. Therefore, it runs off of magic smoke. And now you know. So I've got my kilowatt here. Plug this in. Well, I heard a noise, and there's a light, and I don't smell anything or see smoke yet. It's 3.6, 3.7 watts. So logging into the Unify controller here, it is picking this up. Pending adoption uh, wireless. I'm going to go ahead and click on adopt. We'll see what it does here. As you can see, the light turned from white over to blue once it was adopted. And it shows connected wireless right here. It looks like there is a update to the firmware. Let's just click on it and see. Interesting. Okay, so it just gives us the wireless or the Wi-Fi experience that it will graph out over time. It is connected at 72 megabits download and 54 megabits upload. Config, seeing many options for anything. Outlets, cool. So we can actually turn it off or on for the outlets and see if it gives any indicator here while we do that. There you go, you can hear the switch inside, how it switched off. I'm not sure if the microphone picked that up. I'll turn it back on and put it right next to the microphone. There you go, and you could hear the little click noise again that it turned it back on. Now, I don't know if we can control each individual USB outlet or not. It looks like that it is just considered like outlet number seven. I'm not hearing anything on it. I mean, it could just be because it's much lower voltage for uh, USB charging. Maybe just the switching mechanism isn't that loud. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on upgrade. And we'll see what this does. It probably starts blinking here. 
So when it is blinking between blue and white, it is updating. Now it's just taking a little over three watts here uh, while it's updating the firmware on itself. I'm curious if that will decrease at all after it's updated. It shows it's provisioning and it's done. So it shows it's connected and wireless and still about 3.1, 3.2 watts. Now if I come back into it here, I don't know if there's any changes. No, I don't really see anything. Relay state and cycle enabled. Turn this off. All right, so if we come over here and click on edit, we can go ahead and name this something. So let's say like modem. Now we can tell it to power cycle your modem if the internet goes down when your modem is plugged into this particular outlet. Now I'm not going to enable that quite yet because I just have this sitting right here and I want to plug the modem directly into port one specifically for this use case scenario where if the internet goes down for whatever period of time, then it will automatically just reboot the modem. So I'll just hit apply and then I'll figure out everything else that I'll be plugging into here, outlet two and, and so on. So I went ahead and unplugged my modem and moved it on over to the new Ubiquiti power strip here and I'm waiting for it to come back up. So the internet came back up and now I will come into the strip here, click on outlets and I already named it modem here. Select this here and select modem power cycle and hit apply. So now if the internet ends up going down and it ends up being the modem causing the issue, then it will go ahead and automatically reboot the modem. Thank you so much for watching. And you might want to check out some of these videos over here or playlists on where I take apart things just like this one here. And I'll catch you in the next one.